Hey guys, let's talk about some crossovers. Uh, where you put your crossovers is really going to depend, depend on what drivers you guys are using, what install you're using, where they're located, how they're installed, uh, where they're pointing. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, so we're going to cover the basics of it. Um, obviously being a DSP, it's all electronic, so that kind of makes it a little easier not having to... Um, you know, design physical crossovers that you'd use like in a typical home audio type section or a uh, uh, the crossovers that ship with your component sets or something like that. Um, so anyway, since we're doing active, um, so here's your crossover right here. That is um, basically what that's doing is it's cutting power. Uh, here it started at 59 hertz, call it 60 hertz. So at 60 hertz here, it's going to be about three decibels down, and then it's going to roll off, and that's the slope is how fast it's rolling off. So right now it's about 30 decibels per octave. If you went up to six decibels per octave, that means at one octave up from 60 hertz, so at 120 hertz here, it's going to be about six decibels down, which as you can see, that's pretty much where it's at. Um, I typically like 12 decibel crossovers on everything but the sub. Um, I'll usually put about a 24 to 36 decibel slope on the sub, um, just because it really helps keep all those bass frequencies out of the front of your stage. Um, so, but the rate of roll off, like a lot of people do 12 dB slopes and 24 dB slopes. So, like I said, every you know, octave, so uh, do six. So at 120 hertz, like I said, it's gonna be six decibels down, six decibels per octave. Um, so after 120, you have 240 hertz. So at 240 hertz, it's gonna be 12 decibels down, which is right where it's at. Um, so and that would obviously be if you have no, no slope on it. Um, and then you have what type of slope are you using? Like this is a uh, Butterworth style crossover. Um, obviously it's gonna just have the characteristics of it if it was an actual crossover. Again, you'd have physical parts and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people use Butterworth. Uh, not someone who used Bessel, but as you can see, that kind of changes um, the slope not so much the slope, but because the slope itself is staying the same if you look at down here, um, but kind of how it rolls off on the top. Um, the Chebchev, or however you say it, is a really weird looking one. If you look, it's kind of got a little bit of a peak. It's got a peak and then a dip and then another peak, and then it rolls off really quickly. Uh, there's no gradual um, roll off to help blend with other drivers. Uh, my favorite is the Linkwitz uh, crossover. Um, so most people either use the Butterworth or the Linkwitz. I prefer the Linkwitz. I just think it blends better. Uh, but really, it's going to depend on your drivers and your install. Again, there's no uh, no way to do it. So where you put that, um, like here, if you go to the mids, um, you can see. So this is where, obviously it's a mid driver, so that's where it's playing, is in the middle of your frequency band. Um, I have mine going from 300 hertz to, uh, I call it 3.2K. Um, so it's gonna be flat in here, and again, it's gonna roll off on the top, and it's gonna roll off on the bottom. It's called a band pass style filter, um, because we're using a low pass filter and a high pass filter. Uh, this being the high pass, this being the low pass. Um, it's so like the high pass filter is going to pass all the high frequencies above it is kind of easy way to remember it. Um, so where to put your crossover? Um, obviously the low end is a lot more, uh, your high pass filter, you're on your low end is a lot more sensitive um, in the instance of blowing your speakers or anything like that. Um, this is a three inch speaker in the dash. So if, you know, I tried to play it all the way down to 30 Hertz, it's going to have a lot of excursion and end up uh, uh, reaching its X max and breaking. Um, 
the FS, the resonant frequency of this driver is about, uh, I think it's like 95 hertz, threaded like 110 in this install. Um, a lot of people say uh, no less than double the FS, double your um, resonant frequency of the driver. Um, that's kind of a general rule of thumb. Obviously, a sub is going to have to play into its FS. Um, up to six and a half, or you know, down to six and a half inch drivers, even five and a quarter to an extent, can play into their FS, their resonant frequency, and below. Um, again, install and driver dependent. You're, it's just something you're going to have to look at uh, the QTS of the speaker and how it's installed and that sort of stuff. Um, so that's just a little bit of it. Um, obviously, I want uh, this one a little bit higher. That's just me. Um, I have played it down to 250 hertz, but I have, uh, you know, 600 watts RMS available to each of these speakers, drivers. So, during really loud peaks, I prefer to have it up higher, just safer. And I will uh, compromise with the, um, you know, getting your stage, stage height up and... Um, yeah, yeah, I got my A pillars off. I had a uh, change of heart yesterday and ended up getting some new pillars and some new tweeters also. A um, little Morel, Morel goodness back there. Those are the old ones. Um, and I have the new ones over in the garage. Um, that's for another time. I'm sure you guys will see it in the next couple videos. I'll have them installed waiting for them to dry. They got flocked. Uh, pretty cool process. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's a little bit about uh, crossovers. And uh, like I said, where you put them, like your tweeter, if it has a resonant frequency of 700 hertz, at least one octave above that, that's 1400 hertz. Um, I still like to at least two and a half times, you know, again, driver dependent. But... Um, the smaller this driver it is, the more sensitive it is. So uh, tweeters, I personally would go a little closer to three times. Um, the FS, uh, so 71421. Um, actually, I guess that would be 71428, uh, 2800 hertz um, on a 700 FS speaker. 2521, you could probably get away with fairly easy. But um, again, that's just something you guys are going to have to play with if... You think you may have set it a little too low and you turn the volume up and the speaker starts crackling, obviously turn it down really quick and uh, raise that crossover. So it's just something you're going to have to play with and uh, going to have to see what works best for you guys. If you have any questions, post them up in the comment section and I'll be trying to keep updated with that and... Uh, get you guys rocking and rolling um, be sure to subscribe so you can uh, keep updated on as I roll out the new videos should be a lot more coming this weekend um, so take it easy and uh, see you guys later